let's chat for a couple minutes. I know Jim is uh, running a few minutes late. Um, so let's talk about the NIL space in general for influential. Um, let's kind of talk about uh, the history of, you know, when we started to get into this space and, you know, what, what the opportunities are for us. I think people believe that everyone kind of rushed at like July 1st to figure this all out. This is years in the making. Um, it's, it's about opportunity. We, you now see 150,000 collegiate athletes that are available that were not available a few months before that are now um, you know, looking to monetize that brands can work with on a local, regional, and national level. Uh, it's a game changer. Uh, you know, it's the single largest new group of creators to ever hit the market you know, in, a, in the last five, 10 years. Like it's, 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 it's the equivalent of like how TikTok became a, a massive uh, new stream of creators. But imagine that mixed with five other platforms that are massive, uh, US or you know, um, like across, the, across America, um, but through the lens of 17 to 24 year olds, uh, the, the, the best athletes in the country. Like based on what you've seen, what we've observed in the marketplace, how big of an opportunity do you think this is in, in talking about uh, millions of dollars for the rest of the year and then maybe even leaning into next year? This year alone, across the creator economy, which is a mixture of brand deals, NFTs, different endorsement deals, it'll be nine figures, it'll be hundreds of millions of dollars. Just There's just so much going on right now. We ourselves have already done seven figures, multi-millions to date. It's only been a few months. Um, we or we think we're going to hit probably eight figures by the end of the year just based off of obviously big seasons going up right now, um, heading into even just uh, getting li lined up for uh, next year as well. Okay. And then as far as, as the types of brands that we're seeing um, you know, a, across all of brands, what are the type of brands that you see really leaning into uh, NIL? I'm excited to hear Jim because Jim sees uh, deals just across the board um, from every team and every level of influencer from the macros, the world, like you see with the, uh, the O'Neills to the, the micro people that you've may not, never heard unless you're in that uh, city, city or state. Local Joe's pizzas have been doing a lot in terms of scale, but that's not where the, a lot of revenue comes from, at least, you know, in terms of large dollar amounts. You know, we'll talk about it more in a few minutes, but, you know, from everyone from IHOP that we work with to Everyman Jack, number of people that are on today's show and today's uh, programming are all people that have spent dollars and, and can tell you, you know, the, the efficacy of using these influencers. It's, it's, it's going to be every vertical possible. I mean, uh, I think you have to keep in mind, it's all about audience. So if you're doing NIL campaigns, you're probably going after Gen Z, early millennials that are big fans. Um, you can go older if you'd like, but those are the ones that are going to be the most influenced by people that they think of as, you know, relatable, that are, they look up to as, you know, as essentially, uh, you know, stars on campus when they're walking around, like they're like, it's like having LeBron James beat your campus. Um, if they have large following and they're the, the star quarterback or star basketball player, but even if it's like, uh, uh, you know, people like Libby, like the, the, the TikTok star that is a gymnast at LSU. Um, I, I don't know how great she'll be in terms of you know, Olympic careers, but uh, in terms of her ability to, to monetize and get, get a giant following, I'm sure she is revered and, uh, has a big, uh, you know, big woman on campus type, uh, you know, relationship. And are we seeing a particular um, platform that uh, people are leaning into as far as what we're doing on NIL deals? Uh, is it more TikTok? Is it more Instagram, Facebook? Is it sort of a mix of all of them? In the press, I think I've heard like some Twitter deals. We don't usually get requests for Twitter deals. I mean, this, the, the audience that is most prevalent for what they're going after is going to be TikTok. So TikTok and Instagram in general across all of influencer marketing are one and two right now in terms of just velocity. Um, YouTube's obviously a, a good third, but being a YouTube creator is very, very difficult. It's, that's much more time in production. So I don't think of college, college creators as necessarily being that's not the, the easiest uh, path for them. Um, Facebook part of Instagram, but Facebook's going to be a little older, just which, which where their parents are. They're going to be on there. They're going to be on Snap probably. Um, Snap, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, and then, yeah, just the, I mean, for what we do, oh, there's Jim, but for what we do, the efficacy is the driving those, you know, uh, native plus paid media to drive the results. So yeah, we, we focus traditionally on TikTok, Instagram, uh, and Facebook. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Welcome. You're on mute still. How are y'all doing? Good. Good to see how are you? Good. Good. Sorry about being a few minutes late. And, and sorry on our end for shifting you around so much. Uh, you know, oh, there was a there was a hurricane down south, which made things a little 
trying for us, but uh, we appreciate you jumping on. Uh, because you haven't been here yet, I'm uh, pleased to let you know that you are a very popular man in this community. Uh, we, you were name checked, I think, three times in the last uh, panel. So uh, we, yeah, we're, we're excited to have you on. And you know, obviously we, we have a great partnership with you guys, uh, with Influencer and with Teamwork. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the questions. Um, Do it. So, so you guys, we've, we've had this, this partnership. Uh, we announced it uh, as soon as NIL came about July 1st. Let's go back a little bit and talk about uh, you know, the history of the partnership and what brought us together. And, and feel free, either of you guys, to tackle this. Well, I've been talking for the last five minutes. So, Jim, go, go for it. <laughs> well, listen, you know, we, uh, we've been working directly with college athletes, especially to help them build their brands since Influencer started in late 2017. And our distribution model has always been directly to the school and schools pay us for our software so they can help their student athletes grow their following, which ultimately grows their NIL value, right? And now that NIL is here in the college ranks, you need a partner who understands how to equate that value and then help the athlete realize that value. And that's what Influential does. And that's why when Ryan and I got a chance to meet after our teams had put this partnership together, I was so excited because we have a lot of partners now that are helping our athletes realize their NIL value. But when you see the breadth of how Influential is helping influencers in general, not just in sports, realize their, their name, image, and likeness value, uh, it's really a great partnership because it allows the front end work we do with athletes to help them build their value, get realized through monetization. Well, and I want to call out something, Chris. Uh, Jim is a road warrior. I watch your uh, social. I see you, uh, you know, I'm seeing you talking <laughs> occasionally in text. Uh, you are at every college. You are meeting with, uh, you know, groups of inquiring young minds with coaches, with uh, teams. Um, yeah, what you, got, what you guys have built has been phenomenal to watch. Uh, it really is the it's a it's a foundation that allows for uh, those uh, both those campuses and those students to be in communication. We'll talk about some of the compliance stuff in a minute, but now yeah, we're really excited to partner with you guys. And yeah, since we announced it in Forbes and a few other places a few months back, it's and we've seen tremendous uh, interest from everyone from the brands to the uh, athletes across the board. And, and a question following up to that, Jim, what is that uh, education process like now? I feel like you. You're kind of like a, an evangelist going school to school, telling people about this. Give us a little bit of insight into what that's like. You know, I, I, it's, it's crazy. So we have um, just over 200 Division I schools now that are on the influencer platform, more than 1,500 teams, more than 100,000 uh, student athletes. So for me to go to all the schools or even for our team to go to all the schools is not realistic. And it's not really even what we, what we offer, right? We're a tech company. But for me to go to a dozen schools a year, and just be on a campus and be around the student athletes, I'll answer your question about how we educate them, but I get all the education. I mean, the questions I get from coaches about recruiting now, the conversations I see between coaches and administrators about what they can and can't do, um, the, the competition now between schools with recruiting in respect to that, and then the athletes and their, their ability now to navigate this space, Everything that, that happens on these trips really benefits the influencer product because I get to come back, work with our product team and our team in general on just taking things to the next level. So it's just as much an education for me as it is for them, hopefully. Um, for them, we built um, a place inside their influencer app called the Storyteller Playbook where they can see case studies from athletes they know who built their brand and realized their value. They can uh, learn financial literacy from Team Ultimus. Um, they can learn negotiating your deal on the legal side of NIL from our partner Anomaly. Uh, but we also have a lot of uh, folks from Wasserman and the pro athlete community that are just giving back by providing these student athletes with free education on NIL from all angles. And when I'm there, I'm teaching a lot of that in my talk, um, but they really have those resources at their fingertips. And, uh, you know, last thing I'll say is the reason I started Influencer um, in 2017 wasn't because um, I wanted to help athletes make a bunch of money with their NIL. I knew it was coming and I knew that it was good timing for us to build a platform that athletes would use to build their value so that one day if NIL came, they'd be able to realize that value. But ultimately, as a former college athlete, I just want athletes to understand how short this window is 
and how big of a stage they're on during this short period of time so they can leverage this stage to set the stage for the rest of their lives. I can credit almost every good and bad decision maybe that I've made in business back to college sports, um, even meeting my wife or building my family. Like they need to understand this is a launching point, not the end and some big peak that will go away. And that's my passion. That's awesome. And then someone just literally came in and said, love your passion, Jim. That's Pam Brandt from the audience. <laughs> uh, very, very true to life. Um, so, you know, when you started in 2017, like you were saying, um, what, what was that initial uh, thing that, that made you really want to do this? What did you, was it because you saw that this was going to come soon or did you actually uh, just think that this was a, a holistic thing for the community to do, uh, you know, to help out collegiate athletes? You know, I was sitting just around the corner from my office here in Birmingham, Alabama, and Gary Vaynerchuk was speaking, speaking at a conference. And um, after the, the conference ended, I had a chance to spend some time with him. He started telling me about building a sports agency as his next phase. And we started talking about athletes. And we both had this passion for life after ball, right? Like helping them, like I said, use the stage to set the stage. And I left that conversation with this stirring in my heart. Obviously, he's a big entrepreneur. And I had a business at that time. And I had about seven years into building it from a garage gym to 50 gym locations across the country with my business partner. But I felt like it was time. I felt like it was time to sell. I felt like it was time to figure out how to get back into sports and how to figure out what athletes weren't getting to be able to take advantage of the eyeballs that are attractive to them while they're playing. And as I started studying social media and seeing how much more followers athletes had collectively for a team than the team account had on social media, but I started seeing how little they used social. And I saw when they did share how they were ripping photos that had watermarks on it. And they really didn't have um, the empowerment they needed from a content and education standpoint. I felt like there was a clear opportunity. And it took John Calipari and Kentucky basketball saying, we will pay for you to come in and automate the delivery of content to our athletes from the content we're shooting as a staff from the national media content. You can make that happen. We'll pay you. That's when you know, when the market will write a check, you know that it's not just your idea. It's an idea that will actually work. And then you just go on the journey to figure it out from there and solve problems. That's what we do as entrepreneurs. And the problem continues to be to today, athletes are uneducated. They don't understand some of it because they're young and they haven't lived as long as we have to see that it is a short window. Some of it's because they just don't have the resources to understand how this business works. And so anything we can do to equip them with content, with education around their metrics and their value, and ultimately connections to places they can go monetize their name, image, and likeness, or even go get a job, like that's what it's about. And how many, how many athletes do you reach? And does this, does this serve as a, a portal for the college athlete for a lifetime? Or is it more in the microcosm of the four years? So, you know, we have more than 100,000 athletes now. Um, I mentioned 200 schools, 1,500 teams. We've grown real fast this year. So some of them are still getting onboarded. We really cut our teeth um, early on with some big brands like Miami football, Kentucky basketball, um, learning how to deliver value to the athletes. And as time went on and we had brought on more clients, we learned how to build better tech to help them, but also how to onboard them and get them using the, the software. Athletes average a session a day on our app in season and about four and a half sessions per week on our app out of season. So they're in there just about daily and they're either grabbing content and sharing it to social, looking at their metrics and understanding their value, finding partners like Influential. Um, and so, you know, for, for us, it is a lifetime platform. Um, if a school doesn't renew with us, typically a school does a five-year software agreement with us, but let's say those three or five years are up and they don't renew, the athlete keeps influencer. And if they're a pro athlete and they get to the next level and they want their Getty content without watermarks, or they want to find a platform like uh, Influential, they're going to be able to do that for free. They do not pay us a dollar. We've never charged the athlete a dollar. We make all our money from the school. So it is really thinking in a lifetime way. And we actually just inked a partnership uh, recently with uh, NX Athlete, which is a game plan company. And game plan's an education platform in the college space. And NX Athlete is a place that helps athletes get jobs. And so we're really excited because through that partnership, not only are we going to help athletes while they're playing build their brand, but we're going to be able to put them in front of more employers through our partner um, at Game Plan and the next athlete. And, and that's all part of this vision, this whole life cycle 
that we're trying to serve as an athlete. Nice. Ryan, what, uh, what, what gravitated you towards Jim and influencer as our platform of choice when we made this launch? So we provide data insights, brand deals, measurement. That's why clients give us you know, massive amounts of money to figure out how to solve this for, you know, to hit their audiences and, and grow and show um, you know, ROI. What we didn't have and what we you know, lean on influencer for, and they've been a tremendous partner is, you know, all the eligibility elements, all the pieces that are the reporting and all the, the stuff that people don't think about that goes into these things where it's like compliance officers at different schools, uh, NCAA, you know, uh, you know, just reports, things that just are the pieces that if we do them incorrectly, you can mess up someone's eligibility and really hurt them, which is the complete opposite of what we're all trying to get done here, which is give equity back to these, uh, these talent, these influencers. Um, so influencer was highly rated. Uh, we talked to him, same, you know, everything that Jim said, we, we agree with 100%. Um, and then, yeah, and even uh, people in the marketplace, major social platforms, we're both working with at the same time. So, so the Simpatico was there. Um, and obviously, it's still a growing business. Um, uh, we're both growing. Uh, I think we're both leading the business but, uh, in, in the, the space, but we're growing so that we can actually get every single student, you know, every single college, everybody in these as, as much as humanly possible, so that when... Uh, you know, one of the, you know, upcoming, we have like Nationwide coming on and a few other Elderman Jack. When they say, I want to go, you know, into like a small school in Oregon or, or, or someplace like that's kind of a very specific, unique around a local activation, that that nano, micro, or even potentially macro influencer in that region can be activated that can get dollars for their name, name image, and likeness. Um, and we can then measure the efficacy that, yes, keep spending with those teams, those individuals and drive those dollars for them as they go through their career. And then obviously simultaneously, they can build up their, their brand and head into the other uh, uh, professional ranks or just become regular creators as they come out of college, uh, whether they become a full-time creator or just someone that does on the side, like it's now part of the kind of gig economy. It's part, it's part of people's ways to monetize. So whether they become the next Kobe or the next uh, XYZ uh, player or just become a regular family man that, or, or, or woman that, you know, essentially is, has a hundred thousand followers. They need to figure out how to understand, as Jim was saying, their, you know, every part of their college career. And then we can help also as they elevate into, you know, post uh, uh, college life, just the different stats they should be aware of and the cost uh, and CPMs and dollar amounts that should be putting, you know, on their, on their audience and what they've been able to deliver for grants. And one thing I want to add is, you know, we've always offered metrics, but it's that surface level of metrics. And I think what's been really fun for me personally is when I do go out on the road um, and get a chance to get in front of student athletes, showing them influential data, that extra layer that helps them see how they're perceived. You know, um, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's helpful for the athlete. I think things click when they see the data from the influential system, because it helps them see how they might need to do some things they're not doing to attract the audience they want and maybe the opportunities they want at the same time, how they might be doing some things to detract those opportunities. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun and it's also a huge help for coaches and recruiting to be able to show recruits this picture uh, of, of data. That's, that's really an extra layer you provide. And thanks Jim, can that. you go ahead, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, thanks Jim. And, uh, for those that obviously we see every day we're, we're in this, those that are not, uh, have not seen our technology in the past and what influencer and influential do to, for college athletes. Just imagine this, imagine your nature and real kid that doesn't know that what brands think about your, your platforms, your, you know, what you basically your brand you've built and you might be dropping, you know, the occasional F bomb because you think it's cool and it's fun. We can tell them their profanity rating, can tell them what they're actually saying, what brands are seeing, thinking about, oh, like this, everything I say really is something that exists in the social sphere. So from profanity pieces to best day and time to post, forget even the brand stuff, just when they should be creating content. Um, the audience they hit, maybe they, you know what, my audience is actually very female. I didn't know that. I should create a content that also you know, caters to that audience. Really all these different metrics, brands that you know, my audience has an affinity to. I should talk more about Nike or about Adidas. All those things are stats that, again, help them in their day-to-day -day lives, heading into hopefully the branded content deals in the future. And Jim, let's let's talk about growth for you as a company. Um, has NIL been sort of a, a rocket ship for growth? Are you finding 
that many more universities are now proactively contacting you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, if you ever read the book Crossing the Chasm or any real book about technology adoption, you know, you have your early adopters and that's, those are the folks that, that worked with us in 2018, our first full year of business. And, and we, we really grew um, exponentially 5X from 18 to 19 um, because people started to see they needed to invest in building the brands of their athletes. And this is really before NIL was a for sure thing, you know, in 2019, California passed their bill and people saw that, you know, based on the NCAA's lack of response to that bill, there was a lawsuit or anything like that. NIL probably was going to happen, but that wasn't a reason people bought our software in 2019. And we still experienced some pretty exponential growth that led to uh, Teamworks, another sports tech company, uh, acquiring Influencer and uh, also putting venture capital behind Influencer to help us really keep growing uh, funds like General Catalyst and others became uh, you know partners putting uh, capital and strategy behind us at that point. And so in 2020, um, you know we still grew despite the pandemic, but it was definite that NIL was going to happen, right? And so it really led to 2021. Any school that was not an early adopter has had to make a decision on some set of solutions for education, for brand building, for monetization, education. They're not allowed to fully monetize with a school. They can't be involved in that, but they at least have to educate around monetization and then a disclosure system for compliance. And so some companies like us do all those things. Um, some do parts of them and you've seen schools make a lot of decisions. And because of that, we've had another exponential year of growth, kind of like 2019, um, which has been great, but the market is super volatile and, um, you know, it's moving at the speed of light. Uh, you know, it was a market that had decisions driven by compliance for most of this year. But what you're seeing now that, you know, Penny Hardaway just signed two five stars and within three weeks and FedEx has a deal with those guys, you know, like coaches are paying attention to this now. Recruiting is paying attention to this now. So it's not just a compliance conversation anymore. And I only anticipate that will continue. And I think you're also going to see a lot of group uh, NIL deals happen because a lot of people want to see the team all win, not just one player. So it's just a, a, a fast evolving market, but that's kind of, you know, what I've seen from a big picture standpoint, how our growth played into it. And Ryan, um, obviously we know better than any, the difference between a uh, creator and an athlete, which is obviously something that is, uh, the lines are getting blurred now. What are we doing proactively to help athletes understand how to be better creators? It's, it's some of it happens literally mid campaign because I, I, I think one of the things that we've learned the most because no one really knew this literally until July 1st because we weren't allowed to do campaigns with the college athletes is that inherently people aren't content creators even if they have a large following. So uh, when we're doing these branded content deals, you know, the way that they would basically return back content and they think about it in terms of like the you know, usage of sounds and, and music of editing things together. Like we, if you think of like a traditional content creator, you know, has a couple hundred thousand followers. They made their entire following based off of being funny or pithy or emotional or something. Um, a, an athlete may have just done it because they're tremendous at sports and they just capture a lifestyle. So that to then have them create branded content isn't an automatic muscle. You have to build that muscle like anything else they do in life. So for us, um, we've been basically providing back, you know, briefs and materials and we're going to work with influencer and a few, and a, you know, and a few other of our uh, you know, brand partners to create more and more content that's evergreen talking about like, here's how you should approach these briefs. Cause the briefs we're giving, you know, production style briefs to these influencers. Um, uh, even if it's a, a very kind of organic iPhone style uh, shoot, it still says what you can and can't do. It's your choice, your voice, but you have to hit these marks to say these things still got to be within the, the realm of almost a commercial. Um, so uh, part of it is just education on that. And then two is uh, their, their, what's their value? And the value, uh, people, uh, so one of the, uh, Pam also uh, mentioned in the Q&A, um, uh, what is the value and how do you price these things? Influencers, I, I wish I could say there's an exact set number, but it's gonna change based on platform, based off of the ask, number of pieces of content, is it stories? Is it a, is it a, is it a post on Instagram? Is it a TikTok? Every platform's different. Um, the usage rights, people don't know. Like, 
and most athletes aren't aware that when they get the, the giveaway their usage rights, which is essentially the ability to put paid media to boost their name, image, and likeness across the world at certain locations, you can charge more money for that. Those are, those are, those are cost pieces that, um, on, that are added to a CPM and a cost per thousand the CPM. Um, all these different variables, uh, exclusivity rights, uh, all these things all increase the dollar. So all these things that we know from doing this in the hundreds of millions of dollars over the last you know, uh, eight years are things that a average person would not know, especially you know, if someone just got into college. So those are the things that we're trying to get across. And we actually have to do a better job of really making a, a full repository so that all of that can be done and seen by the uh, influencer and Teamworks athletes. And through this partnership, how are we providing guidance and support to student athletes? I think the biggest way is what I just went through. Um, you know, the ability to show the student athlete his or her influential data is just, it's, uh, it's a paradigm shift because you can tell them all day, you know, that um, you shouldn't freestyle rap on Instagram live. And you can tell them all day that you should post more often, um, especially about this part of your life. But when they see that the data reflects it, and it might reflect things that are different from who they really are. It, uh, it, it really backs up what I say, which is, hey, uh, social media is your digital character footprint. And whether you like it or not, when you go visit somebody's social media profile, then you make a judgment on who they are as a person. You've never met them. You're an athlete making plays. People search you on TV. They see you make a play. They search you on social. They go look at you they're gonna make a judgment on who you are. Not fair, but reality. And so what are you gonna to do to, it simply uh, is having your name, your first name, your last name in your profile, right? Having a profile statement that says your number, tags your school you play for, talks a little bit about maybe a quote you like, and then you actually have posts people can view to see what you're about, not just as an athlete, but outside the lines as a person. And so I say all that all the time, but showing them the influential data backs it up. So now they're like, oh, wait a second. This is an objective report that's saying that I'm somebody I'm really not. I got to change the narrative here. And so I think that's really powerful. And so you have a history of uh, working with professional athletes and obviously now collegiate athletes. What would you say are the fundamental differences in, in working with each kind of athlete? You're asking me that or Ryan? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, I mean, I think um, pro athletes are, you know, the, it's it, to me, it has a little less to do with which status and more to do with their age. Um, a, you know, 28 year old uh, pro athlete is going to do social media and um, influencing on social media completely different than an 18 year old. Um, 28 year olds more likely to give up control of her social media to an agent or somebody else to post for them, whereas an 18-year-old wants to do it all herself. Um, but then again, LeBron's, you know, 36 and still holds his phone all the time, which is why it works for him, because it's genuine and authentic. And that's what I try to tell athletes all the time. But it's just harder uh, with older pro athletes to get them to understand the power of doing it themselves. And one thing I, I do is I just ask them, I'll say, uh, you know, hey, uh, DJ, pull out your phone and, and go to your settings app and do me a favor and look at the time you spent per day last week on your phone. And oh, seven hours and 54 minutes. You can't spend 40 of those minutes posting and telling your story proactively. Of course you can, right? And you are sitting on your phone looking at the feed of everybody else posting, but you're not a follower, you're a leader. Be a leader and put your story out there. And I think, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you work with a ton of influencers, not just in sports, but outside of sports. And there is a unique aspect to athlete influencers versus non-athlete influencers because non-athlete influencers had to work super hard to build their following and they're a creator and they're creative and they know how to resonate with their audience. Athletes just get the followers almost for free if they're good, right? But athletic performance is not enough. You also got to take initiative with your brand. Everything from branded content to just all content is a motive, whether it's funny, whether it's relatable, whether it's, you know, tearjerker, whether it's quotes, everyone has their kind of uh, thing they have to do and they have to embody. Uh, if you do none of those things, you just kind of be, act as a, 
a voyeur of everybody else. Yeah, you're, 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 you may be great and get those hot college highlights, but no one's going to know what your story is, like you said. So, you yeah, know, it's there's uh, it is a I mean, it's a, I think years ago, I think people now get it. But years ago, they'd be like, oh, I can't pay, pay his influencer as any influencer. Ten thousand dollars. Like like they don't that's how, they can be worth that. I'm like you don't realize what they've done to get here and what they're doing to keep it here. Like it is a full time job, whether whether, uh, you know, you might be making more money than a doctor or a lawyer. If you're really good influencer, but you've also cracked the code to the top one percent of anyone of any sort of profession. You should get compensated accordingly. Um, so let's go a little bit younger. So recently, California passed legislation to allow high school athletes to be compensated for the NIL. Jim, what what are you what are you thinking about this? Um, do you see other states that are going to follow, and how will this impact the market? Listen, we're in an interesting time right now because. When the NCAA is scared to set too many rules about something, you know that there are real uh, antitrust uh, liabilities that exist, right? I mean, so the NCAA, you know, has 500,000 student athletes, a thousand institutions between division one, two, three, and it is pretty hard, think about it, to build a rule that helps a student athlete at Ithaca College that's D3 and helps a student athlete at Alabama, right? Like, they're two different worlds, but yet a lot of NCAA rules govern all athletes. And so because of that big sample the NCAA is in charge of, it really limits after losing the Alston case 9-0, what they can do now to set rules without it being looked at as limiting to the athlete. Um, and that's why they, they haven't really set rules And every school pretty much in America has different rules. There are some states that have laws, but even in those states, Florida and Miami have two different NIL regulations for their schools. So just realize that about college. It translates into the answer to your question at the high school level very well, because there really isn't as strong of a governing body nationally. There's the NFHS, um, but it's not the same. It hasn't historically been the same level of governance as the NCAA. What you have is state high school athletic associations that really govern the four, five, seven, eight, nine hundred schools in their state. And there's going to be a lot more opportunity faster for fragmentation, where some states have laws, some don't. But because of what's going on in college, athletes will just say, well, if we don't have rules that I'm not breaking, why not just do whatever is going to happen where I'm going to go next? Because I am going to play college ball and just stay away from whatever the colleges I'm looking at say I can't do so that I'm not ineligible. And it's just a lot of gray. And it's gonna be like that probably for longer than we, we thought because the, the federal government doesn't look to be setting anything or moving this any way anytime soon. I think they actually like the chaos of it all. Um, so anyways, but that's, you know, that's the comparison I think from high school to college. And it, they do fit well together because a college athlete doesn't wanna mess up her eligibility to play our high school athlete doesn't want to mess up her eligibility to play college ball. Um, mm -hmm. So that has to be considered no matter what the high school rules are. And where does influ uh, influencer sit uh, as in regards to this? Are you guys planning to go into the high school market or are you kind of in a wait and see? We're starting to go into the high school market, but more from an elite athletics level, right? So, you know, you think about the, the big camps and um, AAU and those types of things are clear opportunities because it's a chance to, um, capture the user that we're going to capture anyways when they go to Duke to play basketball or they go to Michigan to play football. So why not get into those areas now? But the, the difficulty is, is that, you know, we are a system now with influencer verified to set the rules inside of your tech, communicate them through attestations that people have to check off on whenever they disclose a deal and then disclose the deal. And so if they're going to allow NIL at high school, we're already working with D2 and D3. Going downstream makes a lot of sense for that system. But our content delivery system is a little different because high school sports doesn't have the coverage by the media or even a staff internally shooting content that's anywhere close to the degree of a college. So that product's a little harder to scale um, for influencer. So it, you know, the, the verified product though, if NIL is allowed, will be, will be great. And Ryan, let's, let's share the influential, influential perspective on this a bit. Um, obviously, we have uh, Miara O'Neill, uh, one of the O'Neill children coming on today. Uh, she is currently in high school, and we've recently signed her. Um, what is the perspective from Influential on uh, high school athletes making this jump? For us, it's all about 
step one, protect the uh, the creators, that you know the eligibility piece, the FTC compliance piece, the COPPA compliance piece, which is about having an audience below 13 years old. Uh, too, too much of that kind of like discus compliance, which was alcohol based, which is like 21 plus. So there's a bunch of different kind of ways to look at this from a pure compliance perspective. And then ultimately, yeah, assuming the assuming all of those things are checked. And we get all the you know the the approvals from people like influencer and uh, you know our, our legal and everyone else and the and the, and the states and the schools. Uh, yeah, it goes back to the to the um, to the brand. Does the brand basically want to go after you know Gen Z uh, you know audiences in certain locations? And what is that content that's going to make sense and relevant? Is it a, is it a QSR? Is it after the big game going to you know McDonald's or going to IHOP or is it you know is it more about you know, a product they're using? Is it, you know, is it D2C companies talking about, you know, just, you know, we, we partner with people like Gunther Rank, Ranker for Proactive. Like that's maybe a fit for anyone from from high school to college. So I think it's gonna come back down to once those things are checked and, and, and depending on per state and per, per location, um, is it make sense? Is the, is the brand integration uh, fitting for, because, uh, you know, I think most, most brands want to put the dollars towards where the buying power is. Now, Gen Z has become a big buying power, uh, you know, group. But Gen Z and all these different, you know, uh, Gen Z, Gen X, Millennial, those are all kind of broad. So the 13 or 14 year old actually have the buying power. They have to obviously get their parents most likely to to, to buy things for them. That's going to be a question of like, there's no automotive dollars for high schools. Like that's like, there's no, there's, you're going to see, you know, uh, you know, BMW putting money in for high school campaigns anytime soon. So it has to be the right, the right audience, the right brand. Gotcha. Um, so Jim, in a recent Sports Illustrated article, you mentioned that in July, the average transaction on Influencer was $923, yet the median was 25. Have you seen things change in August? And how do you feel? Uh, where, will, where will we be as the year goes along? I, I think it's continuing to rise. And when we start playing games, I think you're going to continue to see that go up. The question is when, you know, when Jalen Suggs makes the shot against UCLA, um, how easily does he capitalize on that shot now that NIL is a thing? And um, do his teammates also capture, capture the value there? Um, you know, these, these moments that are going to start being made, they've been made every year in college sports and the history of college sports are now going to turn into really big capitalization opportunities. And it's just going to be interesting to see how athletes capitalize, but they will to an extent, and that will, that will definitely raise both the average and hopefully the median. The other thing is, is there are unfortunately a lot of um, a lot of opportunities coming into the NIL world, NIL world that devalue uh, the athlete. And, uh, you know, whether it's just stuff that's, um, you know, uh, in-kind products that are very um, inexpensive, um, they're getting reported and they have to get reported by the student athlete. And that brings down these numbers. Interestingly, it brought about a question in my mind. Um, you know, this has the potential to be divisive and to divide locker rooms. How, uh, you know, how are, how are uh, schools and coaches uh, going to be equipped to prepare for um, how to mediate these sorts of situations? You know, I, I get the question all the time. It's a good question. But at the end of the day, this is the same as everything else, right? Like um, some athletes are going to get all the playing time. Some athletes are going to get all the followers on social media. You know, some athletes are going to be the hero and there's other athletes that really play a role in practice that makes those athletes great. It's just part of being on a team and not everybody's going to get the limelight. Same thing with NIL. Does that suffice? No, there'll be group deals and you're going to see more and more group deals where everybody on the team can win. And you're going to see more and more of the star players say, I want to do a group deal, just like Tom Brady. I mean, listen, the NFLPA has only had one guy ever not opt in, LeVar Arrington. The next year he opted in. So, you know, like the, there's always gonna be the, the, the few players that bring all the value at the top into a group uh, environment, but at the same time, they're still gonna participate and there's gonna be value brought by the group and it's gonna allow the team or all the teams in one conference or all the schools in one state, et cetera, to be associated with a brand that sees value to those athletes in their audience. And that's where I think it can be a we thing and not a me thing. Gotcha. Well, we're unfortunately just about out of time. 
Uh, but before we go, I want each of you guys to kind of um, give a bit of a closing statement. Um, let us know uh, what you see in the future for NIL, um, respective to both of your companies. Ryan, go ahead. Sure. I, I think the group deals is really smart. That's something that uh, is being asked for by um, brands today and will be a, a, much like the MLBPA and the NFLPA. All the things are going to be about you know, those group deals and uh, by, by region, by state, by school. Um, yeah, I think it's going to evolve alongside what's happened in the creator economy. Um, you know, some of you, some of you that are uh, in the audience have watched us with our partnership with TikTok, so that API integration. So you're going to see more and more dollars being spent on certain platforms and then different, uh, different mediums. So there is uh, TikTok Live or Instagram Live or Facebook Live or YouTube Live. So how can they now, beyond just doing the branded content deals, have a direct presence with their audience through a live uh, function, uh, live shopping? Those are going to be elements of the piece. So, so just as as the creator creator economy grows overall, they are going to be a massive benefactor because every year or every four years, I guess, 100,000 plus new athletes will join and jump into the marketplace and will grow their following very quickly. Um, so I think as those evolve, uh, we see that happening, um, you know, kind of you know, in the same vein as what's happening with all the other creators. And Jim, let's give you the last word. What it what would you like to, uh, you know, let this audience know about this new NIL space? Well, I, I think that it's, um, you know, we're 62 days, 63 days into a, you know, a really long multi-decade marathon. And there's a lot of people feeling FOMO from people who have always wanted to get into this space and want to start a business or people who have started a business because they see dollar signs or, you know, athletes who aren't getting deals and they see other athletes getting deals or coaches missing out on recruits. It's, it's, it's okay. Like this is a long game. This is a marathon. Remember the tortoise beats the hare. So, you know, like just take your time in calculating where you can bring value or experience value, depending on who you are. You know, I took some notes today and I'm going to steal stuff from you, Ryan. But <laughs> it's how you doing uh, that. I love it. I love the grow and show ROI. I'm definitely going to use that. That's big, right? Like how do we help athletes grow and show ROI with their brand? Um, and then another thing I wrote down was your choice, your voice. Like how do we help athletes understand that they do have the ability now to control the narrative? and get their voice out there. And that's that's always been our MO at Influencer. So it's nothing new, but there's new ways to do it and new ways to help athletes experience value around it. And that's what we're focused on every day. Well, gentlemen, this was a wonderful conversation. Uh, there's so much more to tap into. Um, you know, Ryan and I have been talking about it recently.